The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, <coughs> Tiger Technicians Hour. This is the Friday edition. <coughs> Excuse me. 12th of April. Monday is going to be uh, Boston Marathon Day. Um, it's usually quite busy out there. It's a little quiet. So, Euro dollar currency pair. The euro is actually up. It's at 1.130. Uh, it had a very nice earlier spike. It's giving back some, stopping at the 50 period exponential moving average. This is good. We've seen so many of these U turns that then fail. Will this fail? Well, I'm a little concerned here looking at the dollar. The dollar is down 31 pips at 96.87. Uh, I'm looking at this and I'm saying there's that cup. There's a kind of a handle. Mm. Nothing to see here at the moment, but the technicals did turn down with price. I'm even watching this going into next week. I don't want to see it under 96.50. I like where it is right now, and I prefer it a little higher. So the Dow at this particular point is acting pretty nicely. Uh, you've got um, Boeing is actually up. Boeing is up 7 at 377.36, trying to form some kind of support on this 200 period exponential moving average, considering the damage that could be done. Uh, this is looking at the from the 446.01 all time high <clears throat> just a month ago on the 1st of March, a little over a month. Hasn't even hit the, the 200 period orange line, the 200 period exponential moving average in the day. Technicals are improving a little bit. Um, we'll see how this is. I just think chop, chop, chop. I think sideways range between 400 and 350 is likely over the coming. Uh, four weeks or six weeks. We'll see what happens. And another thing that we're looking at here is, uh, I've got the wrong mouse. That's what it was. Busy waving it around. Another thing is you've got crude oil. I just wanted to show you something because a Chevron came out um, with an, a, a bid to buy and a dark oil that made the, the actual offers taking place for a 30% for a 30 premium, I think it is. So uh, crude oil right now, 64.13 up in the higher range. Remember, I said that this so far is good for the market. It's good for crude oil, but we needed to see how it held. And I said before, 62.25 ish was what I thought would be a high. Once it broke that, it just went right through from peak D to leg E, now peak E with a high level consolidation. MACD is good, stochastic good in the daily. Weekly chart has improved tremendously, it's bumping up against the 200 period moving average. 6480 area. I like what I see here, but there's a good chance that you've got a range now between 65 and a half, maybe touch 66, and 62 to 61 as support. That's what I'm thinking here in crude oil. The TLT was pulling back yesterday and the day before. Um, yeah, look at that. A little doji candle breaks in the lowercase h pattern, goes to a leg C to the downside. Uh, this is just suggesting to me that the TLT is telling us, together with the VIX index, which is in the 12s, 12.35, it's telling us that there's a really good chance that uh, as long as the volatility index remains low, under 13s or in the very low 13s to the 12s, there's buying pressure. And I had a couple of questions. One was, is this a perfect time to short? Uh, or did we miss going along? Well, for the Dow, uh, we did have a short position. It worked out for most of the week, and then there was a spike to the upside, so we're out of that. But I did not, at this particular point, want to go along, and I'll explain why. The Dow is the lagging, uh, the lagging index. Today, it's one of the stronger ones, up 0.82. S&P is up only 0.40. Why? Because it's gone out of the blue. Just suddenly, you got Boeing having a good uh, um, bounce. JP Morgan came out. One of the reasons why we are long a, a bank stock uh, is that I've been looking at this and saying the banks have done everything right, <clears throat> but it hasn't been recognized. 
And there's going to be a point here where banks, this is what I spoke about last night at the um, conference that I was the, uh, well, actually it was a meeting of the AAII. Um, and this is the amateur, uh, American Amateur Investors um, Institute. I'm not sure if that's the name. Um, but, uh, and it was good to see a couple of tigers there. And it was very short notice. But I, I discussed the XLF and I said, we need to see, I personally would like to see the XLF rally strongly because if the XLF rallies, it means that all the hard work that's been done in the banks, that's not to say there aren't problems that will come later on. Banks always have these problems. They create these problems. It doesn't matter which uh, sector is moving, home builders. Uh, it doesn't matter. Market, at some point, you find out that the banks were not doing something right. But at this particular point, they've done everything right. They've passed all the tests. They're in good condition. So for XLF bouncing up 0 0.44, 27.09, I like that. It's over the previous highs. Leg C in the weekly chart with the technicals improving. Um, so I thought that, that was very interesting. What, Bank the City Co comes out on um, Monday, City Group, and it's trading at 67.34, up $1.43, bumping up against resistance, but very nice action. Leg D, and this is the reason why I didn't feel like I really wanted to jump on a, a gap up on a Friday long position on something that we haven't had a position in, uh, up until now, right? We just went short. That worked out well for a short while. And then today it gapped up, so we got taken out. But this is really important because Citigroup is acting well. Wells Fargo came out, and they're always doing dumb things. So Wells Fargo makes a peak, E right there. Uh, that was in the 52s, trading at 46 right now, down 2.85, down $1.35, 46.38. Hey, that's a problem. Um, it's mixed. Uh, Bank of America is on Tuesday. We're along Bank of America. Huge move up. It's up at um, 0.95 at 30.02, up 3.2% in leg B in the new buy mode. And it's leg C in the weekly chart. Hey, that's very nice action. Uh, I like this. So in, in looking at the overall market, it's important that some of these things be recognized. I don't know about Disney. I've never known about Disney. I remember just years ago, I'm talking about 20-something years ago. It could be even be more. Um, a neighbor had said to me, oh, their son has uh, Disney shares. And then there was a period where, I'm not sure if they, when he went to college, if they sold the, the shares or what. And I said to myself, Disney has just been in the business for so long. And they've always, why does it not go in? And they always managed to come through. Um, and now in this age, and something I spoke about last night, and I did in my webinar, this age of anything goes, uh, where swearing's the norm. Um, Disney, I think, could have a niche there. There are a lot, it's not recognized, but there are a lot of people in America who are saying to themselves, I don't like what's going on here. I like a little clean front. I don't need my kids growing up too quickly. It's quick enough as it is with the internet. I like Disney. And my suspicion is that Disney's playing a good game here but it's not for right now. So this gap up, uh, up 11 at 128, my suspicion is gonna give a lot of that up over the coming few weeks. It's gonna take a while to implement all these different things, but it is a good move for Disney. Um, we'll be back in a moment. The Dow's up 211, has and P's up 14. Basil Chapman, Tiger, Mr. Zau, I'm doing this right on time. Well, let's go commercial. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Is coming in. I just want to show you this. This is the E mini uh, in the two minute chart. It went to, and the reason why I always do, especially since this is Technical Friday, is I like to show you that patterns repeat over and over. You've got your cup, you've got your arch, you've got your straight line move. Yes, your cup that failed, right shoulder failure, pulls back, peak D in the two minute chart about 940, pulls back very sharply, then it stabilizes, makes a load about 1115 at the 2902 20, level after making a 2914. Uh, 0.75 high. Now it's making this cup formation. It's actually more like a ball formation, which says that this candle right here, uh, that's the candle at 1040, at 2908.75. That's going to be that area between that and the top of the previous one of 29. Oh, you know, it's called a 2908.25. This is going to be a little bit of a resistance here. How it handles that's going to be very important. The uh, peak F that was made in the five minute chart right there. Uh, that was very significant because you saw a fading MACD, fading stochastic. Now it's a very nice rally to the upside uh, in leg B in the, oops, I'm sorry, leg C, leg B, leg C. C in the five-minute chart, only leg B in the after peak E top in the 10-minute chart. Make it real simple over the period of the day. It, uh, JP Morgan was up about 4.80, and then all of a sudden it was only up 2.90. Now it's double that. It's up 5.57, almost at the high of the day, 111.78. That's the reason why I didn't want to have any, even if I was thinking of shorting the Dow, where do you short? Because there are these bursts of energy when you get gap up openings because of earnings reports, and then the conference calls pretty good. Wow, that, that, especially if it's a very significant uh, sector and, and index stock. What do you do? Well, two things. One is you have to hold back. You just have to say, let this play out. Um, there's a lot of resistance. Oh, I hope I have time. I want to show you all the different resistance points coming up. But I just wanted to show you if at any point the E-mini today starts to climb above 29.15, that's really positive action. It means that people are thinking really good earnings, maybe general uh, uh, Goldman Sachs on Monday. They want to be in this market, and that's going to be very positive. If there's a reversal, it really has to go underneath 2,900. I'd even say 2,898, and then there's a problem. Then you're going to give back a chunk of the gains. I, there's just a little too much buying going on right now for me to be thinking of anything other than that there could be a late hour give up the ghost sign of, sign of 
I, enough shorting, I just have to buy. So be careful there. Next thing I had was, um, I, I, let me just do this in sequence. Don't, don't, don't want to go out of sequence. Um, that's there. I've done that. I've done that. Yes. So uh, what we need to look at here was the euro, the EURUSD, had a nice bounce. The USD, JPY, that's the yen currency pair, dollar yen currency pair, um, is up 0.35 in that leg B. I really think this is going to make that missing leg D that we've been talking about for four weeks. And we'll see. That other one that we waited and waited for back in October worked out in the weekly chart. Now I think that the, day, the weekly chart has that coming to it. This is a leg B up. I think that's good. And I'm a little surprised that the dollar hasn't acted as well. And look, using Chapman Wave methodology, there you go. Uh, left side, right side, price time match. Let's see if that's going to work out. Go right there. Click. Click. Green because it's going up. Pink because it's going down. And there it is. What was the day that you should test the uh, high of the 5th of March at 112.138? Today was the day. Where did it go? 112.03. A fraction away. And there's a left side, right side price time match. I'm sorry. Left side, right side price time match with Chapman Wave inside wedge repellent line target repellent line, and it said today is actually the day. So it's missing it so far. Time-wise, time, time -wise, uh, this is the day. Price-wise, what did I say? It's about 10 cents off testing that left side high. So uh, that's what we're looking at there. A couple of things I had to get to. Um, I promised myself the questions lining up. Um, yes, you remember IWM? We had that whole thing I had a call the other day, and I said, how, how could you play it using options, et cetera? Even today, there's a nice spike up, up 0.41 at 157.53. It did get to 158.16. 159.50 was the, the, the level we were looking at from the high of 26th of March, uh, 28th to 26th of March. And I have until the 19th. Wednesday, I think it is. 18. Well, I have until next week. Uh, to get to that level. Let's see if the IWM is the, the technicals are good. It's actually struggling a bit on price, but it is moving high, and that's really good. It has sneaked out of the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone, but this is just the first pop above it on a weekly basis. That's going to be important, but it does say that 153.99 to 152.80 is going to be very strong support if there's a pullback. Those are the things I wanted to cover. Crude oil, I think I did crude oil, crude oil, crude oil. Yes, holding very well. I drew the rectangle formation, high-grade copper, high-grade copper, HG, HG is trading up. Uh, yes, in this range, it's in the, remember I drew this uh, cup formation, everything's cup or arch formation, even if it's a V, it's a kind of a cup formation, and it's holding very nicely here. That's copper. Next thing I want to do, da, 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 da. TLT, ah, that's what I was going to talk about. TLT is suggesting that money's coming out of bonds, the VIX index is confirming this and going into stocks, at least for right now. I'm looking at this and saying it's going to be real tough at 122.83 in the TLT, the Lehman T1 fund, for, the, for this characteristic to, to change its stripes and suddenly move to the 125s. That's where the, you'd see selling pressure in the dust. So far, good upside pressure. Um, I, oh, man, I, there were a couple of things I had to do. Uh, yes, transportation, what was the question? Oh, just to tell me what's moving, JBHT, KNX. Yes, transportation index, the IYT will go to the uh, ETF, trading up very nicely, up $1.75, up 0.90%. Wow, that's even better than the Dow. Um, at 195.73, we're up 10 points for subscribers in our long position in the IYT. Hey, let me just do this for a moment. Um, We've got we've got a little time before the break, and now let me show you something. If I can just get that, it's not there. It's not there. It's not there. It is there. Um, so what I do for my subscribers every day, I give whatever stocks we have. I'm looking at them. I'm trying to as much as possible. I try to show the different time frames, what we're looking at, why we want to buy. This is LPG. I spoke about it two weeks ago. I put it. I've done all the work 
for it. I actually put it in with a cup formation with a Chapman wave. I'll put it in real time here. Uh, LPG, I'll, I want to go through these just to show you the work that I do. Whether you like it or not, uh, you can you can decide if you get a, um, a subscription to my opening call. It's a money back guarantee. And you'll get my webinar that I did a week ago Wednesday. I'm really proud of that. I think that nailed just a chunk of stuff that is really important. So we were right there, leg C, at 6.50. And I did this work. I said, left side, right side, price, time match, um, inside wedge resistance. Everything says we should get to the 6.60, I think, level. And it, I didn't know how to get in. I was waiting. And it climbed and it climbed. And then it ran all the way to $8.35. We missed that. I'm going to show three more misses. But I want to show the work that goes into it because a lot of people have used it and done their own homework and have benefited. I'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now is a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So uh, let me just do this. LPG was one of the stocks that we were looking at. It was over here in leg C, and I was saying, this is, look at that. It should be a little doji, and then a pullback, and then we'll get it. I, I didn't even put it on for my subscribers, but I had it already. I think I showed the chart, but I didn't actually do it. I didn't even know what it did. Dorian LPG, I found out afterwards, liquefied gas shipping. And what did it do? This leg C went up for, after I discussed it, uh, I even mentioned it just once, but I, we didn't have it. It went up. One, two, three, four, five, six can green candles to a leg C <clears throat> from 650 to 835. Now it's pulling back. 
single leg A in the weekly chart. What do we do? I don't know, because that's a very unusual move. And another one we had was MWA. We actually had this. We've had it for a long time. We got a stop down because I, I kept the stop a little too tight, although I like the chart. Then we just missed getting in about three days ago. And then it goes from 1023 or something to today's high of 1079. Another miss. I, I, I just I'm talking about the misses because look at the work that I did. I showed all the different things. I just wasn't sure with the market as it was, with the Dow pulling back, whether it would impact these smaller, these low cap stocks. I mean, that's the problem you have. Uh, are they going to hold or are they not going to hold? Uh, yes, uh, there was another one that was um, LTS, one of our absolute favorites. We had it. We had it at $2.78 or something. And we got stopped out for a break-even trade <clears throat> because this one, when it moves, it moves really quickly. Well, look what it did. Stops us out, and then it rallies. One, two, three, four, five, six. Today's the seventh rally day to $3.49. I'm showing this because you can see the left side, right side, price time. Edge. Look at all the work that, uh, that shows you uh, the characteristic. But when I have subscribers, I like to know that I've got some kind of a stop. I don't, you know, I... I don't like that risk reward to me is really very important. And then uh, a couple of days ago, we had uh, YRCW as a, as a position, just missed it. And it goes from our entry point that I wanted in the low sevens, and it goes to today's high of 867. There's the same pattern. We keep looking at these cup formations. I wanted to show that to say that there are people that get my service, they do their own homework, and then they make decisions, not based on what I'm saying, based on what they do. That's, I love that. That's really important. And then there are people that take, you know, what I have, and that's fine. Uh, you know, I, I put the stops in. I'm responsible for those, whether they work or not. But I wanted to say it's the work that I that I do is educational. So what I love is that my Traders Corner and my, my service, I really try to make it an educational form every single day. I give a little class on what we're looking at. Uh, win or lose, doesn't matter. Now it's got leg D in the YRCYR. YRCW, YRC Worldwide Inc. Custom Deliveries, uh, weekly chart leg D. So now they're getting a little bit toppy, right? Um, the question I had from Hector was NBEV. This is one I featured very often here. We've not owned it. Uh, I think maybe we had it just once very briefly. Um, and what, what happened was there was some news related spike. So what does he say? He says, Hi, Basil. NBEV has me pulling my hair and trying my patience. On Monday's move, I thought for sure this would continue up to test the uh, 7.795 mark. Instead of pulling back on very high and very light volume, uh, do you see NBEV making a run to the top sooner than later? Thanks. Have a great week weekend, uh, Hector. So thank you, Hector. So, yeah, I, I, I spoke about this move the other day. Someone in the den mentioned it. I, I thought it was very important, but it had the characteristic of a gap from the 200 period moving average of what we call the Eiffel Tower or the single leg. Yep, the single leg A up. Let me put that in and I'll explain what that means. It's a pattern you'll see me put in here very often. Uh, we get a very, it could be even a B to the upside, but it's like A and then a tiny little maybe peak and then immediate spiral to the upside. And then what it does is it gives back a certain amount. If it's the futures, you can sometimes see the gap up in the futures or when the Fed makes an announcement, you can see that and you can give back all of it coming all the way back um, within days. You can get back to or minutes sometimes, you can give it all back. So this has the characteristic. The weekly chart is the one that worried me when I saw that spike because the weekly needs a lot of work to be able to really spiral to the upside and hold the upside. I think it's going to take at least another one or two big attempts to get towards the $6 level before it really takes off. It is trying to form a base, but if the low of the eighth is taken out, and that's 525, it's at 554 right now, if that gets taken out, that is, a, and then gaps down the next day. It's the biggest island reversal in the shortest period of time we've had in a long time. Please, Hector, be careful with this. And if you are trading it because it's a, a new age beverage, it's in the cannabis sector, these things can move very quickly and they can give back very quickly. So I'm just saying, rather wait for 
evidence, in other words, that big spiral up on the 8th, if it then pulled back and didn't take out the 610 level, six, $6 level, like a 50% retracement, that's my rule of thumb with these, uh, what I call single leg A up syndrome, reversal candles. That would have said if it held and all of a sudden you were above the high of the 8th of 6.27, you're trading at 6.33, I'd say, Hector, this is great. Just make a, make a reasonable stop, let it run, have a trading stop for this kind of move because it's going to be real difficult without that same kind of news to break out. So I'm just saying to you, please be careful and treat it with a lot of delicacy here. Uh, volume, uh, it's got a huge volume. Volume's not the issue. It's being able to get out if there's an overnight gap or something like that in a low price stock. I'm just saying I'd rather treat it as a daytime trade. And every time the, the 120 minute chart, let's see what it does. Yeah, it's just it, it's it's close to another a bounce attempt. If we can use that, if we can use a shorter time frame for the bounces and each time take a little profit, each time take a little profit and treat it as a trading stock right now, because until it really makes the V-shaped pattern or a cup formation with two bars on the right that are making higher highs and higher lows, you've got to be a little careful. I hope that helped you. And Greg, uh, question you got, morning, Basil. I, I looked at starting position in HQY. I don't know if I've ever done this, HQY. I know that uh, during the earlier break, I did a little work on this, but I don't think I've ever health, oh, health equity, Inc. I, I've seen this, but I've never done much with it other than look at it for someone. So it's trading at 74.23. Um, I'm looking at starting a position in HQY as it pulls back to its gap up area. So that's the gap up area. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, good. Thank you for mentioning gap up area. I needed to go back further. That's good. The gap up area is in the 65 to 70 area. Okay. And test that swing point of 327. Yep, that's right. It goes there and then goes up. 327 good i like your thinking online what do you think so this is what i'm thinking it's the same pattern it's almost the same characteristic not the same pattern exactly as nbev that we were looking at but this is what i'm going to suggest to you we've got a break coming up um yes your thinking is it's going to take out the left side low just as it did on the previous arch formation I like your thinking because the MACD is starting to fail and the stochastics are failing. I'll do a little work on this. We'll do HQY uh, Health Equity Inc. trading at 74.27 down at $1.63 as soon as we get back. Dow's up to 31. I'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the gold report currently 
currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. All right, folks, we're back. So looking more and more at this HQY, which is uh, equity, uh, Health Equity Inc. Uh, is it maybe, maybe it's a reach. I'm not sure. I think that the level of 72 to 70 is really what you want to be looking at. So just email me when you see if you see it getting there. That's kind of the area that I'm looking at and saying, you know what? There could be just a break of the, of the left side low this time like there was before, then a decent rally could repeat. Characteristics seem to be repeated in this stock. That's one of them. So let's just, get, I wouldn't wait all that long, just two to three points down. Let's do another analysis, at least for an entry point, Greg. So a question I had now was, um, oh wait, statement, SPX, S&P off to best start of the year since 1987, double digits less than 10 times, double digits? Since 1928, 1987, or 1930, hmm, wow, hey, this is my kind of language here, collapse to come, most of, wow, hmm, uh, yeah, now I've got, I've got a different scenario. I've got a scenario, but it doesn't include that. And the Russell, you know, most of years up, when good start. Yeah, I think a good start in January is usually a good sign. Uh, but uh, let's just do one thing at a time. I, I like what I see. A question about uh, long-term portfolios. Is this a time just to get in and be long, even if there's going to be a, maybe a 2,500 or 3,000 point decline? You know, what I'd said back way back in January of 2010 is that you're buying funds for like a college fund or something, or just a very long term, putting money in now, I said, is something that I I would warm up to very, very much. It's kind of what my wife and I were doing. And that's one thing. At this particular point, it depends on your risk. I do think that there's now, we're getting into an area of resistance. It's either gonna be a breakout or resistance. So this is what my, my thinking here is, that if you're wanting to add to your an IRO or some kind of position like that, and you may be looking at the Dow. Let's just say we're talking about the Dow, the S&P. They're all having slightly different characteristics, but they're all doing the same kind of thing, trying to go to all-time highs or, or on the way to all-time highs. We're having just like the XLK reach. I'd say this is a time that maybe you could start a position, but you've got to be prepared that this is a position, a, a new position. This is a position that you want to be adding to this is where you aren't, if this is your position, this is where you're not thinking of shorting or anything. That's different altogether. This is where you're buying it because if I'm correct and we're going to break into the 28,000s probably this year sometime, the whole thing is how we do, does the Dow handle the 27,000s if it gets, if and when it gets there. But I think that once, as I spoke about last night and I did on my webinar, once the 27,000s is broken, the, the IAI, the broker index, the broker dealer index is going to scream. 
I'd already said if the broker index can get to the 63s, that's very good. Today's high was 62.60. I'm going to re refine that a little bit. I'm going to say 65 to 66 area. But um, just uh, to clarify, we subscribers all along the IAI. Um, so I'm looking at this and I'm saying, good action. I like this action. And I didn't expect that the IAA would move just because of the financials moving. That they'd be, they'd move like this up a dollar seventeen, up one point nine one percent. I like that. I like that very much. And now it's an add to things. So yes, I think as long as you can keep in mind that it's a position that you're getting in close to the all-time highs or near the all-time highs, um, and that there should be some kind of a pullback. I'm trying to deal with that as if to say, you know, let's think about a pullback, but no. If you're looking at a long-term positions, and I'm correct in saying, yeah, maybe there's 2,500 to 3,000 on the downside on a worst case basis if, if everything goes wrong somewhere in the next two and a half to three months. But I'm looking at once we start to get to 27,000 in the down and then 28,000, the public is going to, I asked 100 people last night, now, I'm sure not everybody would have wanted to raise their hands under these circumstances, but it doesn't matter. I, I asked them, how many people here in the last, let's call it three weeks, no, I said, let's call it the last even month or two, has met with friends or family, and someone's come up to you and said, man, did I make a killing in the market, just 20% of it. How many, how ones, who's even just had come up to you and started talking stock market? And you know that not one person raised their hands. Now, I suspect, you know, when I'm in a big crowd like that and you have to raise your hand, I just kind of say, hey, I'm, I'm thinking it out. I'm not necessarily participating. So let's just say 10% absolutely refuse to raise their hands or make any acknowledgement in any, any, any uh, um, situation like that. Um, and yet this was a stock market event, right? So you would think that anybody coming up to them would kind of know that they're in the market, they've been in the market for a while, uh, just kind of get a feel for the. So uh, let's just say 3%, there would be three people, uh, not even three people raise their hands. And all I'm saying is that even if it's completely distorted, another year from now, if this market starts to really move higher because what I call the, the Trump bull market, because this is what he's got. This is the, it's one of the only things he's got. That's his baby. He said it's his baby. If it becomes a Trump market, and I said to them last night, maybe um, nobody wanted to even talk about the market because the minute they mentioned the market, there's this implication behind it that maybe they kind of like President Trump, yeah, especially here in the Northeast. You know what I mean? So um, that was just a joke. But there's a little truth in that. But at the same time, this is the most disrespected mega bull market in history, I would say, uh, up 10 years, and yet nobody raises their hand. In fact, the room should have had two to 300 people because in a real bull market where everybody's talking about bull, uh, you get a lot of people. So I think this is early, and I needed a couple, I needed this week to really think it through in many different levels after my webinar a week from Wednesday that I discussed some of these aspects, and I'm becoming more and more convinced that the downside is going to come because of really scary external things, but they are not the super tanker of the Dow, the S&P, the Qs, the SMHs, we'll look at that, them in a minute. I think this is really an important phase that we're in right now. It is a period of recognition that the super tanker is making its turn, and the turn is towards the north, towards the upside, and um, big, big pullbacks might turn, turn out to be transitory. Um, the, the last one was three months. That was quite long. But we might find that really short and sweet, like that January of last year. Boom, two weeks and it was over, but very sharp. Okay, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking out loud. So the answer is yes, get a position. And I've been, I mean, I have been talking about this in my, for my subscribers for I don't know how long, that we've had no bears, no, no, no stock short positions since the low was made. We were buying the very low. We were buying right at the bottom. We took, did a lot of buying, 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 buying all this time. I'm looking at this very positively. On the shorter term, yes, we like to get to trades. We've had some real nice 
quick turnarounds in the down that we've been able to get. But like yesterday into today, I mean, in one day you can give back your gains because of the speed of the up move. So I'm trying to answer two or three questions at once. I hope I've answered a couple of them right now. We'll be back for our final segment. I'm not going to beat the, uh, I'll beat the gong. Thank you. This is the Dow 234. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge, heard here at TFNN.com. Uh, hi, I just got an email. And see, in December, I was at three Christmas parties. On Christmas Eve, I had five people asking me about market, all their losses in 401ks. They told me we were at a near-term bottom. Oh, that told me I was we were at a near-term bottom. Uh, Sean from Hudson, yeah. Okay, good. Um, ask me about the market and all their losses. Okay, so that was, yeah, that's, I mean, the way I'm looking at it is that I, I think this is the quietest, this is a, a stealth bull market. And, uh, you know, you have to be really nimble to be able to be short. You know, Tesla, you know, when you've got a real story there, that's, and there's a reason to be short something like a Tesla. So we've gone mostly at this point, just short-term indexes. We've, we've traded short positions. No, no stocks. I just have not had any interest in going for stocks, that I, even the ones that I thought were very vulnerable. Okay, enough with that. So let me just quickly uh, uh, clarify a couple of things. Um, at least for my subscribers, we have long, uh, only long positions. The long positions are doing really well. All of them are up very nicely today. Some are up very, very nicely today, uh, almost 1%. Uh, in one, almost 2% in another, 
3.3% in another one, a 036 in uh, the weakest one. So yeah, it's 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 working out okay because it's selectivity that's really important here. That's what we we trying to go for. Um, so within this context, I am looking at uh, something in this coming week that is going to be very important. Let me just run this real quickly. I don't want to beat the gong. I mean, I do want to beat the gong. I don't want to over talk my uh, uh, into the commercial. Uh, first of all, let me say have a great weekend. See you uh, next weekend. Check out my opening call. Uh, it's a 30-day guarantee. Look, struggling, struggling in the queues, but not bad, but it's still moving higher. IWM, IWM, red candle, but it's already gapped up. It's up 45 cents. It's just pulled back from the high. It's still looking good, but it's really struggling again. I wouldn't be surprised if we're getting right to an area of some kind of resistance, and that's all I'm saying. Resistance, meaning you don't have to collapse, but there might be a sideways pullback. April's always supposed to be great. Maybe this April's a little different to others. I'll be back on Monday. Have a wonderful weekend, and thank you so much for being here.